Hello everyone. So we have to begin the Indian geography few questions explanation over here. As you know that the first question 57 number of Indian geography with reference to lakes in India consider the following statements. The Pulikat Lake is an example of Oxbow Lake formed after the meandering the river across the flood plain. So it is a question about the lakes in which Pulikat Lake. Pulikat Lake is very famous lake. I am sure that you will be slightly aware of it is a coastal area lake. And this uh, lake, for example, if we say that as far as uh, Indian map is concerned, you know very well that uh, in Indian map, few famous lakes are there like Chulka Lake, like uh, Pulikat Lake in the coastal area. And Pulikat Lake uh, somewhat here in Andhra Tamil Nadu border, this side, Pulikat Lake. So it is very much likelihood if lake is along the coastal area, then sea water can penetrate here. And this water will be then brackish water. And here it is mentioned it is the meandering river across the flood plain. So very less chance is there that it is the Oxbow Lake because Oxbow Lake is formed at the meandering rivers in North Indian plain, for example, in UP Bihar, in Ganga surrounding. So Pulikat Lake is coastal lake, no doubt. And this lake is also brackish water lake. This question also UPSC asked once uh, Pulikat Lake, Andhra Tamil Nadu border, Andhra and Tamil Nadu border. So the Oxbow Lake, we have doubt here. And Oxbow Lake is seen in the North India like it is Ganga River. And once rivers are basically, you can say, meander, the rivers once meander, like rivers are meandering, then certain times uh, river makes such an intense meandering that river is dividing itself or river, you can say, breaking this loop. And river apne aap hi question karti hogi apne aap se ki itna meander kyo kiya ja raha hai to certain times in flood plain area rivers cut and after cutting this section then this loop is separate and this we call oxbow lake. Isi ki ox ke pairu ke nishan hoote hai to ye ek shape ban jati hai oxbow lake ke. The intense river meandering in the flood plain area in the low land like in Ganga plain. And oxbow lake is in North India. So this, this statement is wrong. Pulikat Lake is lagoon, the brackish water lake in which sea water is also penetrating over here. But it is freshwater lake, the Osbo Lake that is formed in the river plain, flood plain area. The good example of Osbo Lake in India, Kabartal or Kamartal in Begu Sarai in Bihar. So if Kabartal had been the option in Oxbow Lake, it would have been correct. But Pulikat Lake is a good example of lagoon, brackish water like Vambanad in the Kerala or Chilka of the Odisha. So statement one is incorrect. And after this part, second statement, Volan Lake is the result of glacier activities which is formed by the glacier. It is a tough question because we don't have much idea about the which lakes are the glacial lakes, which lakes are the tectonic lakes, which lakes formed by the volcanic action. So lake, lakes are formed by number of ways. So if I say that Wooler Lake is a result of the glacier activity, it is the largest freshwater lake made by Jhelum River. And this particular area, Kashmir Valley tectonically formed. So large depression got formed in early time. And Jhelum River in Jammu Kashmir is basically uh, uh, feeding this famous lake, the Wooler Lake, west of the Srinagar, the largest freshwater lake of the India. And that is so large, it is tectonically built tectonic depression that got filled by the Jhelum river. So it is not the glacial lake. Glacial lakes like Chandratal of the Himachal Pradesh, Suryatal, small small lakes are the glacial lake by glacier melting or you can say uh, Sark lake or Tan lake in glacial topography. So Vula lake is tectonic, it is also incorrect. So statement 1 and statement 2 both are you can say the incorrect. Because correct option is uh, asked, despite if you know these two are wrong, then whether you know playas uh, about anything, even though you are right, you are correct to say okay, only B option will be correct because none of these is not given. 
बट वट इज़ प्लाया लेक प्लाया इज शैलो वाटर लेक इन डेजर्ट एरिया जनरली इन हॉट डेजर्ट एरिया वंस इवापोरेशन इज मोर तो प्लाया आर शैलो लेक्स इन डेजर्ट एरिया एरिड क्लाइमेट डेजर्ट क्लाइमेट वेयर इवापोरेशन इज सो मच सॉल्ट आर सीन इन लार्ज क्वान्टिटी इन इंडिया थार्ड डेजर्ट जैसलमेर दीज आर फाउंड इन मेनी मोर डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ द यू कैन सी द राजस्थान इन जैसलमेर फॉर एग्जाम्पल दीज आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड इज खडीन लेक खडीन और प्लाया लेक दीज कैंड ऑफ लेक्स विल बी विजिबल इन सहारा डेजर्ट एज वेल प्लाया लेक और इन अटाकामा डेजर्ट एंड दीज लेक्स ऑल्सो नोन फॉर सोडियम सॉल्ट और लिथियम सॉल्ट वन फेमस प्लाया लेक इन द वर्ल्ड लार्जेस्ट प्लाया लेक इज सालार दे उजूनी दैट इज इन बोलीविया फेमस फॉर लिथियम रिजर्व लिथियम इन बोलीविया इन लिथियम ट्राइंगल इन एंडीज माउंटेन चेन वेयर ड्राइनेस इज देयर तो प्लाया लेक्स आर शैलो वाटर सच शैलो वाटर दैट वाटर कैन इवापोरेट ऑल्सो इन लिटिल बिट रेन विल अकर देन सम वाटर विल कम अगेन तो दीज आर द टेम्परेरी वाटर प्लाया लेक टेम्परेरी वाटर शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन वाटर और इवन वी कॉल इफ एमरल दिस स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट प्लाया आर द शैलो लेक वेयर वाटर इज रिटेन ओनली फॉर ए शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन सो बी ऑप्शन इज करेक्ट ओनली थ्री सो आई वुड सजेस्ट दैट पुलिकट लेक लोकेशन चिलका लेक लगून और वेम्बनाथ ऑफ द केरला फ्यू फेमस लगून बिकॉज दीज आर गिवन एज ए राम सर साइट एज वेल एंड इवन वोलर लेक इज ऑल्सो राम सर लिटिल बिट इन्फॉर्मेशन यू कैन कलेक्ट अबाउट द फेमस लेक्स ऑफ द इंडिया फ्रेश वाटर लेक्स सलाइन वाटर लेक ऑल्सो द लेक्स फॉर्म बाई द रिवर लाइक ऑक्सबो लेक फेमस कबरताल दैट इज इन बिहार एरिया फेमस ऑक्सबो लेक इन बिहार एरिया एंड दैट इज ऑल्सो द पार्ट ऑफ द राम सर so if you have good idea of the ramsar wetlands then little bit uh, possibility is to solve it but through the diagram as i recommended that diagram you may draw and next question if we focus now the question number 58 consider the following peaks in mountain side like kanchanjunga is mentioned kangtu is mentioned kamit so first of all we will strike okay kanchanjunga we are well aware of second statement we are aware of kanchanjunga famous peak in sikkim area so that is the correct option kanchanjunga so two must be there two in b option two in d option so either b or d out of these we have to choose so certain times rather than getting panic that we don't know kamtu we don't know kamit we have to go for that statement in which we have good idea then this uh, famous uh, kanchanjunga for example in indian map here the this famous peak the kanchanjunga the worldwide third highest peak after mount everest in k2 the uh, kanchanjunga peak sikkim himalaya but as far as kamit and kangtu i am sure that kangtu rarely people know but kamit is one peak little bit idea that kamit is also a famous peak in india and kamit in uttarakhand area kamit peak here near nanda devi in chamoli district kamit is second highest peak of uttarakhand so kamit trishul these kind of peaks besides the uh, nanda devi in uttarakhand and this peak is kamit if you have slightly the idea of the kamit the indian peak in western himalaya and uttarakhand means kumau himalaya this region the uttarakhand himalaya we even call gadwal kumau region so this uh, kumau himalaya then kamit is here mentioned the arunachal so it is wrong it, it is uh, basically uh, kamit is uh, so third is not correct so only 2 and 3 may third is wrong then automatically the b option but if you know kangtu then kangtu is another peak here kangtu in arunachal the highest peak of arunachal namchabarwa is slightly in tibet side very close to arunachal border but in tibet side namchabarwa but this peak uh, kangtu that is in kameng area of the arunachal area so kameng it is also wrong the first statement so option b is correct so what i will advise that whatever we know we have to begin with that and we have to draw the diagram so that our clarity could be more through the diagram once you draw a crude map it will be easy for you as far as the next question is concerned 
the with reference to inductor free reverse system consider the following statements and this question if you know the inductor system i am sure that you can do it very well because inductor river originate from the glacier near bokhar chun kailash mountain a famous statement indus has origin in the kailash mountain very famous river of the india like brahmaputra and indus these both originate from the kailash parbat and in kailash mountain near mansarovar lake one famous uh, glacier is there bokhar chu glacier so bokhar chu glacier the famous glacier of the kailash mountain near mansarovar lake the origin or source of the indus river the so first statement is correct so first statement in a b d option so either a or b or d second statement is that chenab river is the largest tributary of the indus which is formed by the chandra and bhaga stream this question upsc asked also that chandra, uh, this famous river chenab and satluj river satluj is the longest tributary and chenab is also very very famous tributary largest tributary volume wise so famous famous river we have to also remember in our mind get ganga's longest tributary jamuna ganga's largest tributary is ghagra and indus largest tributary is the chenab longest tributary is satluj so that is correct statement largest tributary and chenab river in himachal pradesh joined by chandra and bhaga river chandra come from chandra tal of himachal pradesh bhaga come from surya tal and these two river in lahul spiti one join then it become the chenab river and if it is uttarakhand area it is himachal pradesh area suppose it is the jammu kashmir and if we know the area here then as far as jammu kashmir this side here and it is the himachal pradesh then one river the bhaga river come one river chandra river come bhaga chandra both join in lahul spiti valley north of rohtang lahul spiti valley famous valley where atal tunnel is also there lahul spiti valley and from lahul spiti valley chandra bhagavan join it become chenab river chenab then go to himachal to jammu kashmir then to pakistan so that is also correct statement as per the indus oil treaty india can utilize 80% water uh, uh, from the indus river system you all are aware of that in indus problem is what pakistan got the maximum share big rivers western river indus jhelum chenab for pakistan indus river jhelum river western river for pakistan ijc and rbs ravi bias satluj that is for india but rbs ravi bias satluj less water indus jhelum chenab large amount of water so naturally pakistan got more rights and that is vice versa that pakistan got the 80% right of indus water basin rather than india so third is outrightly correct so option 1 and 2 again the b option is correct here so you will be finding few questions easy one few question difficult in which you have to only check which statement you are aware of and some statements so difficult that uh, with cool mind and with proper study only we can decode so we have to learn from the question test series as well and then the next question uh, the here with reference to monsoon rainfall in india which of the following statement is correct only one statement we have to select here a conceptual part the monsoon part and ek pehla statement hi indicate kar raha rainfall received from the south as monsoon is seasonal in character so monsoon rainfall seasonal in character seasonal reversal of the wind south as monsoon and north east monsoon winds so we all know that june july august september the winds we receive the southwest and next season winter season we observe the opposite flow that we call seasonal reversal so seasonal rainfall in india you all know that south east monsoon hit in india in june july august september next month onwards we will be having the rainfall by june july august september rainfall and that is the seasonal character so though it is correct you need not to see other statement but even though i will advise that nothing wrong if second third fourth also you read and all of the india's rainfall is received during the southeast monsoon only only is extreme statement all the rainfall there is also extreme word all of the india's rainfall india has western disturbances brought by westerly jet india also has the thunderstorms pre monsoon shower mango shower india also receiving the rainfall by northeast monsoon along the coromandel coast so this is a statement of only the rainfall total rainfall by southeast monsoon it is incorrect we have by northeast monsoon along the coromandel coast we have thunder shower and c statement the city of priyagraj generally receive the more southeast monsoon rainfall than the city of patna patna in the bihar priyagraj in the up up in the west bihar in the east and if you know the pattern of the rainfall that in northern portion 
in india the rainfall decreases west to east north east has more rainfall so bengal has more rainfall than bihar bihar has rain more rainfall than up places and up has more rainfall than the haryana haryana has more rainfall than the rajasthan so if patna uh, and uh, priyagraj we compare with priyagraj in the westward and rainfall decreasing because of bay bengal moisture decreasing in that area so patna has more rainfall than the priyagraj so that is also incorrect relief or topography has no role it is no relief and topography has greater role to play we know western ghat when uh, the windward side more rainfall in windward side less rainfall in leeward side so telangana and this area like uh, maharashtra marathwada leeward side less rainfall to so, mountain se takrayengi hawaye pehle udhar barish karenge to mountain ka role hoga कि जहाँ पे माउंटेन है हिल्स हैं मॉस्चर लैडिन विंड को ग्रैब uh, करेंगे तो दैट स्टेटमेंट इज आल्सो इनकरेक्ट सो ऑप्शन विल बी ए ओनली दिस वन थैंक यू वेरी मच हेलो फ्रेंड्स माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर प्रशांत राठौर इन दिस सेशन आई विल डिस्कस क्वेश्चंस ऑफ वर्ल्ड फिजिकल ज्योग्राफी एंड वर्ल्ड मैपिंग सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन The first question, which is question number twenty-fourth, is which of the following straits are you likely to encounter when you are travelling from the Black Sea to the Atlantic Ocean via the shortest sea route? So the shortest sea route between Black Sea and Mediterranean Sea uh, or Atlantic Ocean that passes through Sea of Marmara and Mediterranean Sea. so let me uh, show you with the help of map like uh, imagine this is <clears throat> so let's say this is africa this is western asia this is black sea and uh, this is your mediterranean sea correct so the question is about the shortest route between black sea and atlantic ocean this is black sea this is atlantic ocean so this is basically the turkish straits turkish straits means strait of bosporus and dardanelli strait dardanelli strait is also known as the strait of gallipoli and uh, then there is mediterranean sea and then there is a strait of gibraltar strait of gibraltar lies between you know western europe and africa so basically in this question second third and fourth they are correct so anyone who moves from black sea to atlantic ocean and follows shortest route will encounter these three straits strait of bosporus strait of gallipoli that is also known as strait of dardanelli and strait of gibraltar so the correct answer in this question is b 2 3 and 4 are correct now the next question is with reference to rossby waves consider the following statements these are meanders in jant atmospheric winds or ocean currents if they remain installed in the atmosphere for a long duration they can cause severe heat waves and floods both statements are correct actually rossby waves are large scale bands or large scale you can say waves in the atmosphere or ocean so in atmosphere jet streams they basically follow meandering path and these meanders the wave like path of jet stream that is called as rossby waves now on the poleward side of rossby waves there is you know cold air mass this is cold air mass on the poleward side and uh, on the equator ward side there is basically warm air mass so this is cold air mass this is warm air mass let me write here this is your cold air and this is warm air correct now these waves in the atmosphere they move it's a kind of progressive wave so when these waves move forward you know 
a particular place encounters warm and cold air masses alternatively or interaction between warm and cold air mass which is called as frontogenesis takes place okay but sometimes imagine the wave is stalled if the wave is stalled at a particular place you know the particular place will be continuously either under warm air or under cold air so it may lead to formation of you know heat waves and also you know the front area the area where cold and warm air masses they you know collide with each other there is cloudiness so this cloud cover will cause heavy rainfall and floods so both statements are correct one the rossby waves are waves in the atmospheric winds that is jet stream and oceans and whenever they are stalled the waves are stalled they may cause heat waves you can see the warm air mass will create heat wave they may also cause flooding because this interaction will create clouds and those clouds will cause heavy rainfall and flooding okay so in this question the correct answer is c c is the correct answer that is both 1 and 2 are correct the next question is related to indian monsoon with reference to mascarene high consider the following statements let me tell you mascarene high is a zone of high pressure near eastern side of madagascar in southern indian ocean there are mascarene islands near you know on the eastern side of madagascar and in that area high pressure system develops during monsoon season which is called as mascarene high so first statement it is a high pressure area located near mascarene islands in the southern indian ocean this is correct statement okay fluctuations in the formation of mascarene high may lead to delay in the arrival of monsoon this statement is also correct let me explain with the diagram let's say this is africa this is madagascar correct and uh, this is india this is australia correct so southern indian ocean is south of this equator this is equator so mascarene high is basically the high pressure area which develops here in this area this is high pressure area which is called as mascarene high now you all must be aware that during monsoon season a low pressure zone develops over north india which is called as itcz itcz correct so itcz a low pressure area is created over north india now this low pressure and this high pressure that generates this uh, high pressure gradient between mascarene high and trough over north india that creates a strong band of winds which crosses the equator we call this flow as cross equatorial flow and this cross equatorial flow pushes the monsoon winds towards india so in a way high pressure in mascarene area in the southern indian ocean is good for monsoon because it propels monsoon winds towards indian subcontinent clear now whenever this high pressure area is weak the march of monsoon towards indian subcontinent will be weak or slow so it may lead to delay in arrival of southwest monsoon into india but whenever this pressure is stronger than normal the monsoon will be stronger so one of the factor which is responsible for interannual variation in the monsoon rainfall across indian subcontinent is variation in intensity of mascarene high okay guys so this is about second statement so second statement is also correct so again the answer is c it's a high pressure area on the eastern side of madagascar and this high pressure area pushes monsoons towards indian subcontinent it helps monsoon winds cross the equator in the form of cross equatorial flow now the next question is in the context of indian meteorology which of the following statements is or are correct the first statement is offshore troughs are low pressure phenomena along the west coast of india this is correct statement actually what happens let's say this is 
Indian Peninsula. So all along the western side of Indian Peninsula, there is a western ghat. On the western side of western ghat, a low pressure zone is created, a trough of low pressure is created and this elongated low pressure zone is called as offshore trough because it is an offshore area and this offshore trough is one of the factor which pulls monsoon towards what Indian Peninsula correct so it makes Arabian Sea branch a bit stronger and it favors rainfall over western coastal plain and western side of western ghats so this statement is correct offshore trough develops during monsoon season along western coast of India 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 and this trough favors rainfall in the southern part of India. Second is offshore vortice, vortices, actually it should be vortices, vortex is singular, vortices. Offshore vortices are deflected winds along the east coast of India. No, offshore vortices develop during the monsoon season along the western coast of India. Actually what happens? Imagine this is <coughs> western ghat, this is western coastal plain. So monsoon winds, they strike the western ghat and they create a return current. They create a return current. Basically western ghats divert the winds. Okay. So the return current is created and this return current and advancing current, they together create a circular system which is called as offshore vortex. These offshore vortices they cause heavy rainfall and flooding. Very often you must have heard about flooding in Mumbai. So that is because of offshore vortices. Clear? So offshore vortices develop due to return of monsoon when it strikes the western ghats. The third is the offshore trough results in the strengthening of monsoon. This is correct. Offshore trough is a low pressure area which pulls the monsoon winds. Whereas offshore vortices weaken the monsoon, no, there is no such relation between offshore vortices and monsoon. Actually offshore vortices, they are low pressure systems characterized by formation of cumulonimbus clouds and heavy rainfall. So cumulus and cumulonimbus clouds are created and these clouds cause heavy rainfall along the western coast of India. So there is no such kind of weakening effect of vortices on Indian monsoon. So third statement is correct. The second, uh, sorry, uh, third statement is also incorrect. So only first statement is correct. That is offshore troughs are low pressure phenomena along western coast of India. The second and third statement both are incorrect. Okay. So A is the answer. <coughs> the next question is consider the following differences between body waves and surface waves during an earthquake. During the earthquake, three types of waves are recorded, P waves, S waves, P waves, S waves and L waves which are also called as surface waves, long period waves. P and S waves, they fall in the category of body waves. Actually body waves are generated inside the earth whenever there is any dislocation of crustal rocks. Whenever the gravitational equilibrium of rocks in the crust is disturbed, they are dislocated and huge amount of energy is released inside the earth at a point which is called as hypocenter or focus. Correct? So the waves which are generated at focus or hypocenter inside the earth due to dislocation of rocks are called as body waves. Okay? Surface waves basically develop when body waves reach to the surface and strike the surface rocks. So when body waves strike the surface rocks, another set of waves is produced which is called as surface waves. Some of the surface waves are longitudinal, some are transverse. So number of waves are generated which, which are collectively called as surface waves. Okay. So first statement is body waves are more destructive as compared to surface waves and are the last to reach the seismograph. Both parts of this statement are incorrect. Actually surface waves are more destructive than the body waves. When surface waves travel along the surface of earth, they shake the ground and 
dismantle the buildings and human infrastructure. So, surface waves are more destructive and body waves are faster. Actually, P waves are fastest. That is why we call them primary waves. They are basically first recorded by the seismograph. And S waves are secondary waves. They are second one to be recorded during the earthquake by seismograph. So, P and S waves are faster than the surface waves. In fact, surface waves are called as L waves, long period waves because they are recorded at last. So, there is a time lag between arrival of body waves and surface waves. So, this statement is incorrect. Second statement, while surface waves are generated on account of interaction between body waves and surface rocks, the body waves are generated due to the release of energy at focus. This statement is correct. I told you body waves are set of waves which are released at the focus or hypocenter due to release of energy and this release is, energy is released when the stress in the rocks is released, correct? So, basically rocks are stressed due to you know plate tectonics and other factors and whenever this stress is released at the hypocenter or focus body waves are produced. So, second statement is correct but first statement is incorrect. So, B will be the correct answer, B is the correct answer of this question. Next question is with reference to marine heat waves consider the following statements. Marine heat wave means an elongated period of abnormally high temperature in the sea water. So, when the temperature of sea water is higher than expected for long period then it is called as marine heat waves. Marine heat waves may be present in the surface water as well as deep water. Okay. Now, what is criteria for you know declaration of heat waves? It occurs when sea water temperature exceeds a seasonally varying threshold for at least 5 consecutive days means when temperature of water is higher than threshold value for at least 5 days consecutively then heat wave is declared, marine heat wave is declared. Now, this threshold on the basis of which heat waves are declared is not same in all the seasons. For winter th the threshold will be lower, for summer threshold will be higher, correct? So, the threshold is seasonally variable. So, seasonally varying threshold, let us say the threshold normal temperature, threshold is marker of you know average normal or expected temperature. So, let us say expected temperature of sea water is 27 degree Celsius in summer season. Now, if actual temperature is 30 degree Celsius at least for 5 days, then this situation will be known as marine heat wave. In winter, imagine temperature of sea water is let us say at a place, it is let us say 20 degrees Celsius, correct? This is the expected temperature or normal temperature, but actual temperature of the sea water in winter is imagine 22 degrees Celsius. So, for 5 days consecutively, this situation is also heat wave. So, heat waves are declared in the sea water. Whenever temperature, actual temperature, the recorded temperature is higher than threshold value or ac expected temperature and this uh, threshold value is seasonally variable. So, this first statement is correct. Okay. Now, second is it forms only in summer when there is excessive heating of the sea surface. No. Heat wave means the temperature of sea water is higher than normal. Okay. So, they may develop in summer season as well as winter season. The only difference is in winter season, the threshold will be lower, in summer season threshold will be higher. So, second statement is incorrect. Third, it leads to bleaching of corals and adverse impact on fisheries sector. Always remember, the marine organisms evolve or they survive, they are adapted to particular set of physical environment, particular set of temperature, particular you know uh, uh, value of salinity. If there is any fluctuation in the temperature or any aspect of physical environment that negatively affects their life. It increases risk of disease outbreak, it reduces productivity. So, overall biotic productivity of the oceans decreases due to heat wave. It also leads to degradation of coral ecosystems, bleaching of coral ecosystems. So, third statement is also correct. So, what will be the answer of this question? B is the correct answer of this question. First and third statement are correct. The next question is 
related to derecos. Derecos are the bands of strong winds which generally develop in US and Canada. And uh, the winds in case of Dereco, they flow in a straight path. Okay. And this phenomena, this weather phenomena may last for, you know, 14, 15, 16 hours. So it's a relatively long lived kind of phenomena. It is a short lived wind storm associated with bands of rapidly moving showers. Bands of rapidly moving showers, that is correct, but it is not short lived, it is long lived. I told you it may persist for, you know, more than 12 hours, clear? So it is a long lived weather phenomena, which is generally experienced in US and Canada, clear? <clears throat> it is a warm weather phenomena that uh, and therefore is most prominent in the summer season, that's correct. Actually, derecos are associated with large scale thunderstorms. Thunderstorm means a zone of convectively unstable air and cumulonimbus clouds. So let me help you understand how they develop. Imagine this is the area and this area has warm air, warm and moist air. So let's say warm and moist air rises. As warm and moist air rises, you know, there is formation of clouds, cumulonimbus clouds are created. And these cumulonimbus clouds cause heavy rainfall and due to heavy rainfall, you know, a down draft is created, you know, the raindrops drag the water, drag the air downward. So air starts sinking and due to evaporation of water, this air gets colder. Okay. So this cold air is sinking and warm air is rising near the ground. This cold air is spreads. It blows like this. And this outward flow of cold air, which is further pushing warm air up, is called as derecho. So derechos are strong gusty winds which are associated with thunderstorms and uh, they cause lot of damage and destruction in US and parts of Canada. Clear? And they are related to, you know, high temperature and high moisture content in the air. That's why they are you know, generally they develop in which season? Summer season. According to meteorologist, on an average, 70% of derecos, they develop in summer season and 30% around they develop in other seasons, like winter season. So prominently they develop in which season? Summer season. Not only, if they say they develop only in summer season, then it will be incorrect statement. So prominently in summer season. So first statement is incorrect, second is correct. Now third statement. In the northern hemisphere, they mostly occur in the central and eastern parts of US. Okay, that's correct. Eastern part of US. While in the southern hemisphere, they develop near eastern borders of Australia. No, they don't develop near eastern borders of Australia. Generally, they develop in US, eastern US and parts of Canada. But uh, occasionally, they also develop in, you know, Argentina, Brazil area, not in eastern margin of Australia. So third statement is incorrect. So in this question, only second statement is correct that derecos are most, the, they, they mostly develop in summer season. So answer is B. B is the correct answer of this question. Now next question is related to <coughs> global drainage system. So here you need to connect the rivers with the sea where they discharge the, their water. Mekong river, Mekong is the major river in Southeast Asia and this river flows into South China Sea, correct? So it flows into South China Sea. So this is incorrect matching. This is not correct match. Here actually they have written East China Sea, but Mekong river flows into South China Sea. So first state, first, you know, pair is incorrect. Second is Volga river. Volga river is the river of, you know, European Russia. It flows into Caspian Sea. So Volga River that flows into Caspian Sea. It flows from north to south and discharges its water into Caspian Sea. So this is correct, the correct kind of pair. Volga River flows into Caspian Sea. Mississippi River is a major river in US which flows southward and discharges its water in Gulf of Mexico. 
so mississippi river atlantic ocean actually gulf of mexico is a marginal sea of atlantic ocean okay so this is correct matching actually they it flows into gulf of mexico and gulf of mexico is basically part of which ocean atlantic ocean so if they say gulf of mexico that will be more correct more specific but atlantic ocean is also correct because gulf of mexico is a marginal sea of atlantic ocean third is rhine river rhine river is a major river of western europe and this river is known for transportation correct so it is one of the most developed water transport inland water transport system of the world and this rhine river flows into north sea so this is also correct matching so second third and fourth are correct pairs so the answer will be c c will be the answer not b so this is incorrect c will be the answer 2 3 and 4 they are correct matches okay so the c is the answer for question number 31 So that is all about these questions. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, discussion on the polity questions of Anubhav. So let us look at the first question. Ah, uh, let us look at question sixty-one with reference to the information and communication technology ICT initiatives launched by the Election Commission of India. consider the following pairs so last year we know that there were uh, several questions uh, in the prelims exam where uh, pairs had been asked and they were uh, quite difficult so this is a question on that uh, you know the same pattern uh, the first uh, pair is sweep which you have to map with uh, it is saying that sweep allows returning officers to scrutinize nominations filed by the candidates so this is not a correct match this is provided by encore okay this is not a correct match encore karke ek alag uh, uh, initiative hai election commission ka this encore initiative which allows the election commission to have uh, up to date information about nominations of candidate about the you know it has two types of uh, you know platforms one is dealing with uh, the real time information on votes polled and uh, analytics related to the polling of votes and the second one is about nomination and uh, you know other things about the candidates so this is not a correct match second one is know your candidate actually this is a, uh, you know this should be here know your candidate it is like uh, a kyc which we have in our bank know your uh, customer this know your candidate okay so informing about the criminal antecedents status of candidate this is a correct pair okay we know that uh, supreme court had given the judgment in the you know adia uh, i think it was uh, the union of india versus adr case 2002 Where it had made mandatory that the candidate's criminal background must be brought into the public domain. So after that, uh, some amendments were brought to the RPA section 33A was added, 33B was added. So this is on those lines. The to make the candidate, uh, the people aware of the background of the candidate, it is mandatory that their criminal background should be declared in public domain. So this portal is this this platform is helping it in that. The third one. So this is a correct pair. So one pair is correct till now. First one is wrong. Second one is correct. C vigil. provides voter education spreading voter awareness and promoting voter literacy this is provided by sweep okay so sweep is the you know uh, program of the election commission which is talking about voter awareness okay systematic voter uh, empowerment and education program so this is again a incorrect pair so the first one is incorrect second one is correct third one is incorrect and in core i already told you it is talking about allows returning officers to scrutinize nominations so for monitoring day to day uh election expenditure of candidates this is done by c vigil okay so c vigil is the uh, platform through which the candidate the people the voters they can send any input about violation of model code of conduct etc theek hai so you could use uh, you know common sense also vigil it is not about education okay so vigil is more about uh, you know vigilance so this was an incorrect match know your candidate it was very obvious that it seems to be a correct uh, you know option so mostly sweep and encore what something which could have confused you okay so only one pair is correct so the answer is a right so this is how you have to you know practice elimination also but in this one elimination is very difficult right so let us look at the next question
with reference to the state legislative councils in India, consider the following statements. So, we know that the legislative councils uh, are present in some of the states of the country, article 169 allows for it. So, the first statement is the bill for the creation of the state legislative council in a state must be passed by both the houses of parliament by a special majority. So, this is not a correct statement. Remember, it is one of the flexible features uh, in our constitution. It enables creation or uh, you know abolition of state legislative council by a simple majority. So, a special majority wala part galat ho gaya. This is not correct. It requires simple majority. Currently, only six states have a legislative council. So, this is a correct statement. Okay. Earlier, there were seven states, but now this is only six. Jammu and Kashmir does not have it. Okay. So, UP, Bihar, Maharashtra, Karnataka and Andhra and Telangana. These are the four, six states which have legislative councils. Bicameral legislatures in Indian provinces were introduced through the Government of India Act of 1919. This is again incorrect statement. Uh, remember, bicameral legislature was introduced in India for the first time in 1919, but only at the centre. In the states, that is the provinces of the British uh, Empire, it was introduced in the Government of India Act 1935. So, this was 1935. So, this happens to be an incorrect statement. For a state having 240 members in the legislative assembly, the maximum number of members in the legislative council can be 80. This is a correct statement. Remember what is mentioned in the constitution about the size of the legislative council. The minimum size is 40 and maximum can be, maximum can, it has to be less than or equal to 120. One uh, third of the legislative assembly strength. Okay. It cannot be more than one third of the legislative assembly's strength. Okay. So, agar legislative assembly ki strength hai 240, so the maximum number will come out to be one third of it that is 80. So, this is a correct statement. Okay. So, fourth is correct, second is correct, first and third are incorrect, so answer comes out to be C. Okay. So, this is the second question which we have discussed. Now, which of the following cabinet committees are currently headed by the Prime Minister? So, when we look at the cabinet committees, uh, remember cabinet committees are a smaller body out of the cabinet. Okay, cabinet hame pata hai, uh, we have some 15, 20, 25 senior ministers of the council of ministers who are comprising the cabinet. Usme se bhi ek choti body hai cabinet committee to ensure quick decision making of the government. Generally, most of the cabinet committees are headed by the PM, but kuch committees exception hai, jisme PM head nahi hai uske. Theek hai, to ye question usi par based hai. Uh, cabinet Committee of Employment and Skill Development. This is a factual question. This may uh, zyada aapko ki kuch hai. This is a very, very factual question. But sometimes these kind of factual questions are also coming up in the exam. So we have to be prepared accordingly, right? So when we look at this, uh, you know, Cabinet Committee on Employment and Skill Development, it is headed by the PM. Appointment Committee of Cabinet. It is a very important committee. All the important appointments made by the government. They are all decided by the cabinet committee on appointments. So, of course, it is the PM who is heading it. Cabinet committee on parliamentary affairs, this is the incorrect one. This is headed by the defense minister. Okay. So, ye defense minister head karte hai. Usi tarah se cabinet committee on allotment hoti hai, usi home minister head karte hai. Hai? So, cabinet committee on political affairs headed by the PM, cabinet committee on uh, investment and growth headed by the PM. So, answer will be 1, 2, 4 and 5. Okay. So, answer is C. This is the correct answer. Okay. Uh, and and uh, sometimes, you know, they can also go for asking you about the composition of a cabinet committee which has been in news very frequently. Maan lije cabinet committee on economic affairs bahut news mein ho, ya cabinet committee on uh, security bahut news mein ho. To uska bhi aapko ek baar uh, at least yaad rakhna chahi ki kya kya important members us mein hai. Thik hai? Generally, it is having four or five ministers. So, you should have some idea about what are the ministers involved there. Okay. Let us have a look at the next question, question number 68 with reference to the multi-state cooperative societies, which of the following statements is are correct. Now, when you look at uh, multi-state cooperative societies, remember very clearly cooperative is a state subject. There is no doubt over that. Okay? Entry 33 in the, uh, you know, state list, it very clearly talks about cooperatives. But here we are talking of multi-state cooperatives. Okay? Cooperatives ke liye ek alag part bhi dala gaya hai constitution mein, part 9b. 
और इस पर एक कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में मल्टी स्टेट कोऑपरेटिव्स को लेकर एक आई मीन कोऑपरेटिव्स को लेकर एक अमेंडमेंट हुआ था नाइनटी सेवन अमेंडमेंट एक्ट 2011 जिसके थ्रू पार्ट नाइन भी डाला गया था उस अमेंडमेंट में बहुत सारे पोर्शंस को सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने इनवैलिड डिक्लेयर किया था रिसेंटली एक जजमेंट में उसी कॉन्टेक्स में ये काफ़ी इंपॉर्टेंट रहा एंड रिसेंटली देर हैज़ बिन अलॉट ऑफ कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी ओवर नंदिनी काओ यू नो मिल्क एंड नंदिनी ब्रांड एंड अमूल ब्रांड इन कर्नाटका and about uh, multi state cooperatives amul entering into other states so this has been a important issue so we need to have some clarity on it now let us see multi state cooperatives is a concurrent list subject under the 7th schedule of the constitution of india theek hai ab is statement ko agar aap dekhenge a uh, multi state cooperative karke aisa koi subject hai hi nahi constitution mein theek hai cooperatives hai jo state list mein hai theek hai state list इट हैज द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ कोऑपरेटिव ठीक है बट द पॉइंट इज दैट इफ अ कोऑपरेटिव इज वर्किंग इन मल्टीपल स्टेट देन हाउ डू वी एड्रेस हाउ डू वी लेजिस्लेट अपॉन इट हाउ डू वी रेगुलेट ऑन इट सो फॉर दैट रीजन द पार्लियामेंट हैज यूज एंट्री फोर्टी फोर ऑफ द यूनियन लिस्ट यूजिंग विच दे हैव मेड द लॉज ठीक है तो पार्लियामेंट ने लॉज जो बनाए हैं मल्टी स्टेट कोऑपरेटिव को लेकर वो कैसे बनाए हैं एंट्री फोर्टी फोर है यूनियन लिस्ट में which is talking about uh, formation of companies or trust which are operating or corporations which are operating across states theek hai so isko use karke ye banaya gaya hai it is not present in the concurrent list aisa koi subject nahi hai there is no subject which is dealing with multi state cooperative societies so ye statement galat ho gaya okay then national cooperative development corporation is responsible for registering and regulating multi state cooperative societies this also is an incorrect statement theek hai इस बॉडी का काम एनसी डी जो है नेशनल कोऑपरेटिव डेवलपमेंट कॉर्पोरेशन इट इज फॉर फंडिंग कोऑपरेटिव एंड इकोनॉमिक सपोर्ट टू इट इट इज नॉट फॉर रजिस्ट्रेशन उसके लिए रजिस्ट्रार होती है एक बॉडी वो काम करते हैं इसके रजिस्ट्रार जनरल ऑफ कोऑपरेटिव दैट इज अ सेपरेट बॉडी सो एन इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर फंडिंग ऑफ कोऑपरेटिव नॉट फॉर रेगुलेटिंग द कोऑपरेटिव ठीक है सो दिस स्टेटमेंट अगेन कम्स आउट टू बी एन इनकरेक्ट स्टेटमेंट सो आंसर इज डी ओके बोथ दी स्टेटमेंट आर इनकरेक्ट All right. Next we have, with reference to the presence rule under Article three fifty six, consider the following statements. So, as per the Supreme Court's judgment in S R Bombay versus Union of India case, the president cannot dissolve the state legislative assembly till the proclamation is approved by Parliament. Okay, or. Uh, दूसरा स्टेटमेंट है अबाउट द प्रेजेंट रूल द पावर्स ऑफ द प्रेजेंट ओके लेट अस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एनालाइज द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज दैट द सुप्रीम कोर्ट जजमेंट इन एसआर बॉम्बे वर्सेस यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया केस द प्रेजेंट कैन नॉट डिसॉल्व द स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली टिल द प्रोक्लेमेशन इज अप्रूव्ड बाय पार्लियामेंट ओके नाउ सी सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैड गिवन अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट जजमेंट इन द एसआर बॉम्बे केस ऑल ऑफ यू आर अवेयर ऑफ इट देयर द सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैड सेड दैट Until the Parliament is approving the present rule, what is the time period? Two months time period is there. Okay, so there is a time period of two months within which present rule shall be approved by both houses of Parliament. Remember, once a state emergency or present rule is imposed, it can continue for two months without approval of both the houses. But if it is not approved in both the houses, then it will lapse. So Supreme Court has said that until and unless both the houses have approved it. you should not dissolve the assembly because there was a lot of uh, you can say misuse of presence rule where uh, the governors they used to recommend the dissolution of the house even before approval of the presence rule so it became a very very misused provision as a result this judgment was there so this statement is a correct statement theek hai next we have uh, during uh, presence rule the powers of the legislature of the state are exercisable by or under the authority of the president By or under the authority of the president. This is an incorrect statement. क्यों गलत है यहां पर प्रेजेंट की जगह पर क्या होगा Parliament. So when Article 356 is used, the Article 357 very very clearly says that the power of making laws is under the state. Okay? Very very clearly says that the power of making laws in the state it is now transferred from the state legislature to the parliament. The parliament may exercise this power either on its own or इट मे डेलीगेटेड टू द प्रेजिडेंट और एनी अदर अथॉरिटी अंडर द प्रेजिडेंट ठीक है तो प्रैक्टिकली स्पीकिंग दैट पावर इज यूज बाय द गवर्नर थ्रू द प्रेजिडेंट इन नॉर्मल केसेज 
राइट सो प्रेजिडेंट के पास वो पावर आती है बट वो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में ऐसा लिखा हुआ नहीं है कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में लिखा हुआ है वो पावर पार्लियामेंट के पास जाता है एंड पार्लियामेंट कैन डेलीगेटेड टू द प्रेजिडेंट एंड पार्लियामेंट में गवर्नमेंट के पास मेजोरिटी होती है इसीलिए जनरली हमेशा प्रेजेंट को देते हैं एंड प्रेजेंट फर्दर डेलीगेट टू द गवर्नर बिकॉज ही इज इन अ बेटर पोजिशन राइट दैट इज हाउ द गवर्नर कूड गिव हिज यू कैन से कंसेंट to abrogation of article 370 and to bifurcation of jammu and kashmir into two states two uts as was done in 2019 aur usi mudde par supreme court mein case chal raha hai ki kya governor isko kar sakte hai ki nahi kar sakte the okay so this word present over here is wrong it is parliament so this is an incorrect statement if the lok sabha passes a resolution disapproving the continuation of the present rule in a state the president must revoke the proclamation This is not a correct statement. ये provision लोक सभा के लिए state emergency के केस में नहीं है This provision is only for national emergency. ठीक है So the special power of लोक सभा to call a special session within 14 days notice with minimum support of वन tenth of the members of the लोक सभा to revoke the emergency, it is only available in case of national emergency, not in case of state emergency. State emergency के revocation का एक ही तरीका है प्रेजेंट का नोटिफिकेशन ठीक है so this is also an incorrect statement the first statement is a correct statement so the answer will be a one only okay theek okay? hai so please remember this lok sabha has special power to pass a resolution for revocation of an emergency this is only available in national emergency not for state emergency next we have which expenditures are charged upon the cfi salary and pensions of judges of high courts salary and pensions of judges of high courts so pensions of high court judges remember this we have discussed in the class also very clearly high court judges salaries are charged upon the cfi but pensions are uh, charged upon the cfs but pensions are charged upon the cfi so pensions are charged upon the cfi but salary this is on the state jis state ka jurisdiction hota hai us state ke consolidated fund se judge ki salary aati hai so this statement is not a correct statement expenditure required to satisfy the judgment of any court you read article 112 which defines what are charge expenses wahan saaf saaf likha hua hai kisi bhi court ke judgment ko jab implement karna hota hai to use charge expenditure bataya gaya hai cfi par All right, salary and pensions of the controller and auditor general of India, Article 148. देखेंगे उसमें साफ साफ लिखा हुआ. We have discussed all of this in the class itself. So this is also charge expenditure. Salary and pensions of chairman of UPSC. This is also a charge expenditure. And this is not a charge expenditure. Salary and pensions of chief election commissioner of India. Remember this also we have mentioned in the class. We have discussed that as an issue. कि charge expenditure नहीं है. अभी recently Anup Banerjee case Supreme Court has said that the governor government should you know. Uh, try to bring the expenses of the election commission under charge expenditure category okay and i hope all of you remember what is a charge expenditure it does not require formal voting in the parliament before the expenses are made right so this is incorrect and uh, this is incorrect 2 3 and 4 are correct so the answer is d okay so that's all from from my side these were the questions which were uh, dealing with my portion okay thank you everyone hello everyone welcome to the test discussion for anubhav and i'll be discussing the questions that are asked from the some of the portions of indian polity so let us look at the first question with reference to the preventive detention preventive detention it means they are talking about article 22 of the constitution so with reference to the preventive detention consider the following statements now before we have not completely read the question do not try to write find the answers the constitution safeguards in case of preventive detention 
are available to both citizens and aliens. Any person who is arrested or detained under a preventive detention law is to be produced before the nearest magistrate within a period of 24 hours of such arrest. Only parliament can make a law providing for preventive detention. Which of the following given above are not correct? Okay. So, the, here they are not asking the correct statements, they are asking the not correct statements. So, the first statement, the constitutional safeguard in case of preventive detention are available to both citizens and aliens. This portion where they say that it is available to both aliens and citizens, it is correct. This statement is correct. Now, article 22, it clearly provides that the punitive detention rights are available to citizens and they are not available to the enemy aliens and those who are detained under the preventive detention. But the rights for preventive detention are available for all. All means citizens as well as aliens including both friendly aliens and enemy aliens. It means this statement is correct. A person who is arrested detained under preventive detention is to be produced before the nearest magistrate. This is incorrect. A person who is under punitive detention is to be produced within 24 hours to the nearest magistrate. Now, also in this case, remember that this 24 hours does not include the traveling time. 24 hours must exclude the traveling time. So, second statement is incorrect. Only parliament can make law providing for preventive detention. It is also incorrect because the union list the union list under the entry 9, union list under the entry 9, it provides that the parliament can make law for preventive detention in case the, in case of defense, in case of foreign relations, in case of security of the country, right. Then in that case parliament can make the law. When it comes to the state government, under the entry 3 of the concurrent list, as per the concurrent list, even the state legislature can form law for preventive detention in case it includes the maintenance of public order, in case it includes the security of that state or it includes the provisions for the essential commodities and services. In these cases, both state and the parliament can make the law. It means third statement is incorrect. So, correct answer for this is B, 2 and 3 only. Okay? Now, let us go to the next question. With reference to the review petition in Supreme Court, consider the following statements. Okay? As per the constitution, with the review petition shall be fined within the 30 days of the judgment or order sought to be reviewed. Second, review petition is to be heard by a minimum 5 judge bench. Which of the following are correct? Now, as per the constitution, this line is wrong. Though article 137 of the constitution says that the Supreme Court has the power to review its own judgment, but it does not provide any such provision that the review petition shall be heard within 30 days of the judgment. Review petition is something which is a discretion of the court. You cannot ask it as a right. So, there is no such limit for the review petition to be asked within 30 days. Also, an additional knowledge that the review petition, it is if rejected, this can be rejected not by any higher bench. It means the review petition is to be identified and it should be heard by the same bench, by the same judges who have given that judgment. So, there is no minimum criteria. Now, after the review petition has been rejected, there is always an option to have a curative petition. In case of a curative petition within 30 days, of that judgment that curative petition can be taken. In case of a curative petition, it is heard by the same bench and if the Supreme Court feels then there can be a three judge bench that can hear that curative petition. But understand it is not a matter of right, it is the discretion of the court. So, for this question D, 
neither one nor two is the answer. So, it is not any minimum judges, it is to be same judge or bench, same judge or bench and it is not as per the constitution. Okay. Now, let us go to the next question. With reference to the schedule 6, so now we are talking about schedule 4. 6 schedule, consider the following statements. Currently, only the tribal areas of northeastern states have been included in the 6 schedule. This is correct because at present, 6 schedule is in states of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, Mizoram, and all these 4 states are in the northeastern region. Autonomous district council under the 6th schedule have both legislative as well as judicial power. This is also correct because the 6th schedule provides for the autonomous district council and it also provides for the regional councils. As per this, the councils have executive, legislative and judicial powers. However, any such power can always be taken as an appellate jurisdiction to the high court. Okay, So, respective states high courts can be I uh, can be having the jurisdiction over such judgments of judicial powers. A bill for the amendment of the sixth schedule needs to be passed by both the houses through special majority. This is incorrect. The bill should be passed by simple majority and if it is simple majority, it will not be deemed as an amendment under article 368. It means first correct, second correct, third incorrect. So, answer will be A, 1 and 2 only. Okay. 1 and 2 only. So, this will be the third question. Now, let us go to the fourth question. With reference to the scheduled tribe, which of the following states are correct? And this is a very important question because whatever is happening in Manipur, it is because of the high court judgment with respect to giving the status of scheduled tribe to Metis. In the internal security classes, we have already discussed that. So, this is very, very important. The constitution of India is silent about the criteria for specification of a community as a scheduled tribe. It is a correct statement. Though article 342 mentions that there can be tribes that can be declared as scheduled tribes, but it does not provide any such criteria. The criteria that is being taken for identification of the scheduled tribes is taken on the recommendation of Lokur committee on the recommendation of Lokur committee, where they take the criteria of first primitiveness, second geographical isolation and third their shyness and socio and educational backwardness. Okay, Socio and educational backwardness. These are the criteria, but not by the constitution, but by the local community. A list of scheduled tribe is state or union territory specific and community declared as a scheduled tribe in a state need not be so in the another state. It is also correct a list that is prepared for scheduled tribe and also for scheduled caste. That is not a union list, it is respective to a state or union territory. A group can be a scheduled tribe in a state and it can be a scheduled caste in another state and it can be unreserved in another state. So, it does not have any such condition that it will be having a universal implementation. Approval of Registrar General of India is necessary for the inclusion in the scheduled tribe. It is also correct. Now, the state or the union territory will identify a scheduled tribe. Then they will send it to the Ministry of Tribal Affairs. They will send it to Ministry of Tribal Affairs. Then they will take the recommendation of first the Registrar General of India and second the National Commission for Scheduled Tribe. After the review by both these institutions and offices, Registrar General of India and National Commission for Scheduled Tribes, then the President by notification may declare a group as a scheduled tribe. Okay? So, in this case, all the three questions are or the three statements are correct. Okay? So, this is, these are the fourth questions that I had to discuss. Okay? I wish you all the best for your prelims preparation. Thank you. Hello everyone, I hope all of you are doing good there. Uh, these are some of the questions from your this Anubhav 2023 related to ecology and environment. Consider the following pairs, protected areas versus state 
the place where they are located uh, question is asked how many pair given above are correctly matched now these kind of a question if you have an idea about we have already seen location where they're located or you have studied from geography point of view some understanding you have uh, otherwise if you have studied directly orang national park we have already seen number of times manas nameri orang dibru saikova dehing patkai rai mona kazi ranga that is assam so this is not arunachal pradesh that is assam mudumalai national park we have already seen in the class number of times tamil nadu shendurni right that is wildlife sanctuary kerala periyar tiger is a periyar you already know that is kerala right so that is periyar tiger is of a national park kerala so this is karnataka is wrong it means uh, Two and three is correct. Pair means only two pair are correct. That's one. Next is uh, with reference to broadcasting seed technique, consider the following statement. Uh, the question I think is with respect to the direct seeded rice. So this is when we say the direct seeded rice. In that case, there is water saving. Yes, it helps to reduce the emission of the greenhouse gases. Yes, one second. This is it reduces water consumption, water demand, uh, reduces emission of greenhouse gases. It shows heavy resistance to pest and weed. In fact, this is the problem. The weed is the important weed infestation, pest infestation, important problem of the direct seeded rice. So if the, some of the points you have to remember from the direct seeded rice. In case of the direct seeded rice, first of all, it is old practice, ancient practice traditional practice it has been going on for many years this is in this case generally low labor demand is there you have to right you're not going for the planted seeds you're not going for only the saplings nursery you don't need where you will be coming up with the saplings and then you will be going for the plantation so there is a direct seed direct seeding is done you directly use a seed uh, here with the help of drilling otherwise broadcasting can be sometimes the drilling is separated from the broadcasting also but the question is mainly with respect to the generally direct seeded rice so the low labor and as well as uh, here uh, water requirement is also less so water less emission of greenhouse gases also will be less so greenhouse gases emission is less however in this case the in those aerobic conditions the nitrous oxide emission may increase if it is written over there one of the limitations the n2o may increase nitrous oxide may increase this is one number two is what timing is also timing is before monsoon because after monsoon if already there is too much of a flooding is there becomes right then in there will be limitation of this that limitation doesn't exist when it comes to the plantation method here we have a timing also one of the consideration n2o may increase sometimes the seed consumption also may be more because there you have got a sapling so the requirement of the seed may be relatively less in comparison to the broadcasting seed technique here in comparison to the direct seeded rice there the seed requirement may be less here the seed requirement slightly may be more but overall if it is written input cost then input cost is less especially the labor cost is less water demand is less greenhouse gases emission is less but one problem comes so other one of the biggest limitation one of the biggest disadvantage of this is that it may have the more infestation of weed so that third point is incorrect third is given here and as well as here and as well as here sometimes if you remember one point or two st still we are able to solve the question in the examination that approach also works i have already told you the answers but still you remember emission of greenhouse gases n2 is also a greenhouse gas but if it is generally written the emission of greenhouse gases particularly methane emission decreases so the methane emission is written decreases yes if the greenhouse gases emission is written decreases yes but if the nitrous oxide is written then it may increase may increase so not necessarily right it may increase that is one <coughs> next is with reference to global methane initiative which of the following statement is obligatory correct it is launched under the aegis of cop 26 of united nation framework convention climate change when the meeting took place here in glasgow cop 26 of the united nation framework convention climate change the uh, 
initiative which was launched that was global methane pledge and not the global methane initiative this global methane initiative it is a 2004 initiative that is gmi is a 2004 initiative it is mainly focusing on methane coming from three important sectors one is oil and gas one is coal mining and one is biogas so it is biogas from all agriculture uh, or municipal waste or solid waste etc so it is from all areas it was launched so this becomes wrong it wasn't launched here COP26 took place in Glasgow, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. It involves the active participation 2021. It involves the active participation of private sector entities and financial institutions and NGOs. Yes, uh, countries also participate in this. India is one of the country which is participating in the Global Methane Initiative. India is a member of both Global Methane Pledge. No, India is not on the Global Methane Pledge, but is India right? participating in the global methane initiative yes global methane initiative is mainly focusing on the methane emission from the three sector i've already told you one is coal mining one is oil and gas sector sector and one is the bio biogas so this methane pledge is correct uh, incorrect this part is also incorrect so only two is correct let's see what's the an answer here correct answer using the code given below in this case uh, only two is correct so where is the two only two that is c only two is correct next is uh, with reference to the world restoration flagships world restoration flagships under this various big programs were recognized contributing in ecosystem restoration as a part of the united nation decade on ecosystem restoration 2021 to 2030 united nations decade on ecosystem restoration so these are part of the united nation e decade on ecosystem restoration yes the selected flagships are eligible to receive funding from imf uh, for promotion actually it is not mentioned with respect to the imf such like this however right this is promoted by principally under the fao and as well as the united nations environment program so unep and fao they're contributing with respect to providing support india has no such flagship as of now wrong out of the 10 which were selected one belongs to india that is ganga rejuvenation program so under the namami gange with respect to the ganga rejuvenation that initiative is part one of the flagships from india so india has no such flagships as of now wrong this imf is wrong so two and three is wrong only one is correct answer would be a that is one only which of the above statement is obligatory correct next is which of the following is the initiative taken by government of india to curb black carbon emission we only see black carbon that is black carbon part of particulate matter emitted in the form of strong light absorbing component of particulate matter in the form of fine particulate matter soot particles right so you just remember whenever there is a combustion incomplete combustion right whenever there is a kind of a carbon fuel is in question then with respect to this there may be this emission of black carbon and to curb the black carbon emission it means we are focusing on more cleaner fuel we are focusing on more cleaner technologies it will contribute in curbing the black carbon emission now pradhan mantri ujwala yojana yes because of the lpg use will be there so that will be reducing the black carbon emission would have, would have come from the combustion of the biomass based fuel so pradhan mantri ujwala yojana leaf frogging from bs4 to bs6 norms to more cleaner fuel network of metro rail for public transportation so for the fossil fuel demand may decrease because of this again cleaner fuel introduction of cleaner alternate fuels like ethanol blending yes sustainable alternative towards affordable transportation that is satat yes it's written mention only faster adoption and manufacturing of electric vehicles yes shifting of brick kilns to zigzag technology yes so these all would contribute in black carbon emission it's an easy question most of those programs you just remember which are focusing on more efficient use of fuel which is using cleaner fuel which is reducing the reliance on the fossil fuel as an important source in those cases the black carbon emission would decrease so answer would be select the correct answer black carbon emission curb and so answer would be all next is
in context of the sustainable development consider the following statement on green fins hub i think we have seen already in the current affairs class also it was launched by the international maritime organization no it's a global marine tourism industry initiative right this is global marine tourism industry marine tourism industry initiative global marine tourism industry initiative however this is supported by the global reef foundation and as well as the world reef foundation so there is a world reef foundation this is one of the charity organization based in uk and plus the united nation environment program is also supporting in that it has global digital platform for diving and snorkeling operators worldwide to conserve the marine environment yes so that is marine tourism while promoting the marine tourism how sustainably the marine tourism can be promoted and can be contributed the activities in such a way so that marine biodiversity is protected is conserved next is consider the following statement regarding biochemical oxygen demand we already seen in the class what is bod biochemical oxygen demand is the amount of oxygen required demanded by the microorganism when they will be going for decomposition of biodegradable dead organic matter so that is by bod it represents the amount of oxygen required to decompose the organic matter under aerobic condition that is biochemical oxygen demand that's simple we have seen high bod level in a water sample indicate more pollution more bod means remember more oxygen demand because more pollutants are there more dead matter is there that dead matter would be decomposed by the microorganism so higher bod indicates higher pollution presence so statement number one is correct and as well as state number two is also correct nano bubble technology can be used to lower the bod of water body this is principally we have seen already in the class where we're talking about aeration it means more oxygen supply air supply and one of the ways the gas is supplied or oxygen supplied is nano bubble technology so in the nano bubble the bubbles are a very small size right globally many they are not criteria standard so sometimes some places the reference values may vary but generally 100 to 200 nanometer so that is below 200 nanometer generally may be considered as a nano bubble since they are very small right they are having a kind of a right this neutral buoyancy so neither they go up nor they sink in the bottom nor they come towards the surface example if the bubble size is relatively bigger then right what it will be it will be having a positive buoyancy and when it will be right there it will be inserted in the water soon it will be lifting itself up will be coming at the surface and will be bust over there, busted over there and that's why it cannot retain that gas that oxygen for a longer period of time but here it can disperse may cover larger areas in the nano bubble it will be able to bring that oxygen so the dissolved oxygen level will increase so because of the nano bubble technology the dissolved oxygen level increases bod decreases cod decreases we will be seen in the class chemical oxygen demand and as well as a biochemical oxygen demand dissolved oxygen level if it is written increases bod decreases cod decreases yes so that will be what one correct two correct three is also correct answer would be one two and three next is which of the following best refers to the keeling curve it's a keeling curve simply remember named after mr keeling who started the practice since 1950s 1958 that started some places may be written as 1956 so around 1958 there was what much of a concentration of co2 is there in the atmosphere roughly 315 was taken in the 1958 so from 315 we have seen right previously it has crossed almost 420 parts per million when it comes to the keeling curve uh, this uh, measurement is done at mauna loa observatory that is in hawaii island hawaii us recently we have seen volcanic eruption taking place there Mauna Loa is one of the largest volcanoes and recently we have seen because of the eruption this keeling curve that um, measurement that was shut down there so one is what is it is related to keeling curve very simple it is talking about the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide so let's see where this is an option an inverted u-shaped curve between income and environment degradation no a graph that shows the ongoing change in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the earth's atmosphere yes over the period of time what is a carbon dioxide concentration in the Earth's atmosphere J or remaining things not important so just remember that scaling curve is with respect to this additional point comes Mauna Loa observatory that is uh, Hawaii Island right 
which are the following are the benefits of using biochar right this is biochar a biomass has been converted thermochemically into the char that is biochar so biochar example mainly using pyrolysis or um, using gasification also so this is biochar means required amount of oxygen has not been given for the complete combustion it has been converted into that solid carbon content where is relatively higher that is biochar improving what it does right we have already seen some places in the class improving water infiltration and retention yes increasing the abundance of the helpful microorganism yes reducing fertilizer runoff yes as well as it moderates the uh, ph value of the soil yes that is moderate acidity of the soil reducing fertilizer runoff increasing the abundance of helpful microorganism improving water infiltration and retention yes it does all this so even remember when we talk about this biochar addition to the soil as a soil amender so remember these are the kind of benefits which we may obtain so answer would be all of the above with reference to ethanol blended petrol consider the following statement ethanol has a higher octane number than gasoline yes ethanol has a higher octane number than gasoline uh, so pella point is correct right octane number mainly remember with respect to the knocking if the octane number is more the knocking would be less if the octane number is less the knocking will be relatively more mainly when we talk about the octane ratings octane numbers we are referring to the petrol engine hum petrol ki baat kar rahe gasoline ki baat kar rahe isi ka ek tarike se counterpart hum cetane numbers ki jab halaki dono ko hum different reference mein baat kar rahe hain par abhi cetane is for the diesel and octane is for the petrol now jo iso octane hai wo uske liye hisab se uska kya percentage hai right that's one right We're talking about the octane number so ethanol has a higher octane number yes over 100 ethanol has a higher octane number than gasoline right so this is example ke liye agar blending kiya hai iski gasoline jo suppose 85 octane rating wala hai 113 octane rating wala 110 octane rating wala ethanol hai mix karenge to octane rating thodi badh jayegi to iska matlab agar ethanol blended petrol likha hai to isse petrol ki octane rating badh jayegi ethanol contains more energy per gallon than gasoline no energy agar hum ek same volume rakhe ki 1 liter petrol hai 1 liter ethanol hai to us ethanol ki jo energy hai right available energy hai usme utne volume mein wo kam hai so it contains less energy per gallon than gasoline more nahi hai so this more is wrong ethanol has less energy the addition of ethanol to gasoline lowers the nox emission ye nox emission ko kam nahi karta hai halaki ye mainly jo hai jaise carbon monoxide ke emission ko kam kar sakta hai hydrocarbons ka emission kam hota hai par nox ka emission kam nahi ho sakta bad bhi jaye so nox emission may increase right it may increase carbon monoxide decreases hydrocarbons decreases so hydrocarbons कार्बन मोनोऑक्साइड वगैरह डिक्रीज है पर नॉक्स का इमिशन बढ़ सकता है सो दिस इज एडिशन ऑफ एथेनॉल टू गैसोलीन लोअर्स द नॉक्स इमिशन रॉन्ग एथेनॉल कंटेन्स मोर एनर्जी रॉन्ग लेस एनर्जी एथेनॉल हैज अ हायर ऑक्टेन नंबर देन गैसोलीन यस दैट इज करेक्ट सो स्टेटमेंट नंबर 1 इज करेक्ट ए 1 ओनली नेक्स्ट इज methane consider the following statement which of the statement given above is are correct methane is the second most abundant anthropogenic greenhouse gas we already seen in the class number 1 is carbon dioxide number 2 will be methane and number 3 will be nitrous oxide among the anthropogenic greenhouse gases abundance so the second most abundant anthropogenic greenhouse gases methane correct methane is more efficient at trapping the heat that then carbon dioxide we already seen in the class global warming potential if i say global warming potential if i compare based on the 100 year then if the carbon dioxide is having a global warming potential of 1 then the methane is having a global warming potential of 25 35 so example around 25 to 35 many a places sometimes may be written as a 28 like we have seen previously in the ipcc also but 
on a 100 year lifespan if we talk about the 20 year lifespan it may be 80 to 90 between 80 to 90 also may be written some place so it means remember carbon dioxide ke comparison mein methane ka global warming potential the ability to trap more heat right this is having higher ability to trap more heat in comparison to the carbon dioxide methane is a short lived climate pollutant yes roughly 12 years ke aas pass iska atmospheric lifetime hai aur agar aisa hai to hum aam taur pe se short lived mein le rahe hain short lived correct hai trapping heat ka potential zyada correct hai aur ye second most abundant hai ye bhi correct hai so methane 1 2 and 3 all three are correct answer would be d 1 2 and 3 next is Consider the following statement, biomethanation is a process by which organic material is microbiologically converted under aerobic conditions to biogas. Biomethanation, is ka matabhi, a microorganism is bio my, mass based waste ko convert kar rahe hain kis mein? methane aur baaki ki dousri kuch gases us mein combine. Example, one of the constituent is biogas. Lekin, e konsa process hai? This is the anaerobic decomposition, not aerobic decomposition. So, those methanogens, these microorganisms, they are going for the anaerobic decomposition not the aerobic decomposition so it is not aerobic condition it shall be what kind of a condition anaerobic condition in the absence of oxygen not in the presence of oxygen so biogas again anaerobic not aerobic biogas ka jo main constituent hai, that is methane main constituent is methane plus carbon dioxide and plus other right this is Next is bio augmentation is the addition of pre-grown microbial culture to enhance microbial populations at a site to improve contaminant cleanup. Humne class mein agar kahi par um, jin ki classes mein mein dekha hai bio stimulation and bio augmentation. Agar conditions increase kar better kar rahe hai example supply of air, oxygen, giving, uh, giving more nutrients so that the microorganisms can perform faster decomposition that is bio stimulation. Jaysay humne dekha hai bio stimulation may be through bio venting or bio sparging. Bio Stimulation. By stimulation means supplying necessary nutrients, necessary oxygen, as air supply. But if the number of microorganisms is increasing, if we supply it, then that will be called as a bio augmentation. So in the bio augmentation, we have an addition of pre-grown microbial cultures, right, which will enhance the microorganisms population. So it will be enhancing the microbial population. So that is bio augmentation. Then we correct. Bio remediation is a process that uses microorganisms to detoxify contaminants in the soil and the other environment. This general statement hai. I already told you bioremediation means bioremediation using living organism and living organism but mostly when we say bioremediation we are mainly talking about the microorganism however phytoremediation using of plant is also a subset of bioremediation so bioremediation is a general term but this statement is not incorrect per se because the statement is written in general language bioremediation is a process that uses microorganism yes it uses the microorganism to detoxify contaminants like example it may be either detoxifying the contaminants or reducing the toxicity of the contaminants so both we talk about either eliminating the toxicity or reducing the toxicity uh, making it non-hazardous or making it less hazardous contaminants in the soil and the other environment so that is correct that is correct the first statement is incorrect because in case of aerobic it should have been anaerobic so first is incorrect one is incorrect two and three is correct answer would be c that is two and three next is if a straight line is drawn from jim corbett national park to satyamangalam tiger reserve which of the following will be closest to the line now please do remember you simply uh, cannot do with respect to all of the protected areas in India like this. Mostly when the questions like this would come in the examination, you will be able to identify based on your understanding of the geographical equations of those places and some understanding with respect to the overall map. Now, if you see, this is India's map and this is Jim Corbett it is talking about, right? Jim Corbett to Satyamangalam, Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve. So, when we say Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve, it means we are talking about the almost meeting point of the western guards and the eastern guards so it means we are talking about that part where the northern part of the tamil nadu right the southern part of the karnataka it means we are talking about that place over here right now that is a satyamangalam tiger reserve and then we say satyamangalam tiger reserve here and this is 
Corbett here. So we have an idea like example what is written is the Satkosia Tiger Reserve. When we say Satkosia Tiger Reserve it means we are talking about the Odisha. So Odisha it means it must be somewhere little away from this line right that is Odisha that is Odisha. Second is written Valmiki. So you have an idea that is Bihar. So again remember we are talking about somewhere more eastern part of this. However one place sometimes the confusion may be there Kanha National Park and as well as a Satpura National Park. Now this question only you can answer if you have an idea that the Kanha National Park is more close to the eastern side of the Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh ke thoda or close hota ja raha hai. So it means remember, if we come, it means this is relatively this place, but Satpura is relatively more closer to the this north south line. So answer should be what Satpura National Park. Satpura National Park. Ye thoda baat jab naam yaad honge kahan par hai. Uske basis par you can keep on solving such kind of a question. Operation soft cold, we have seen in the class number of such operations like special operations launched by the Wildlife Crime Control Bureau like Operation Lesno, Operation Wild Nest, Wild Net, right? Operation Save Kurma, we have written those names over there. So these are the various operations launched by whom? These operations are launched by the Wildlife Crime Control Bureau. Wildlife Crime Control Bureau. We have seen in the class various operations launched by WCCB, Wildlife Crime Control Bureau. With reference to protected areas, consider the following pairs, marine protected area and the state, again the same point is there, so you shall have an idea. Gahir Matha, we have already seen when we were talking about the turtles, Olive Ridley turtles, Gahir Matha, so that is Odisha, Point Calimere, Tamil Nadu. Koringa, we have seen number of times in the class, that is Andhra Pradesh. Sajnekali Sanctuary, that is not Rajasthan, that will be West Bengal. This is Sundarban wala area, hai. Wahan par ek wildlife sanctuary, Sajnekali wildlife sanctuary is also there. So, this is, ye naam se aapne thoda andaza lag sakta hai, aapko is tarikhe kahin terms bhi padhe hai, aapne West Bengal, ya uske aage Bangladesh mein, is tarikhe ke term kabhi dekhe hai, khali. Right, so that's Sajnekali Sanctuary, so this is, this is wrong. 1, 2 and 3 is correct. So, only 3 pairs are correct. Let us see. Consider the following pair, Ramsar side river associated. This we have seen in the class, current affairs class may be the Shalbuk wetlands. Ye mainly jo flood plains of Jhelum hai. So, Jhelum flood plains ke ki baat kar rahe pe. So, Jhelum flood plains. It means remember, this is not Chenab here. Haigam wetland, Jhelum, correct. Nanda, we already know that wetland from Goa, right, on the Ramsar side. So, this is Goa. So, if you remember from that Ramsar site list also, you can easily understand. Obviously, the Bias cannot be over there. Jowari river is there. So, that is Bias cannot be there. Three, if it is not there. Now, see, this, sometimes you have an eye difficulty in uh, exactly pinpointing the Shalbuk with respect to this. Sometimes these kind of a question come in the examination. Now, this is very easy part. Nanda wetland, that is Goa, the Ramsar site. So, three is incorrect. Three is incorrect. Three is incorrect. Three is incorrect. The obviously answer remains what is B. That is how the question many times come in the UPSC real examination also. With reference to polar amplification, we already seen in the class polar amplification, Arctic amplification. So, what is polar amplification? On an average basis, the average temperature increase is more faster in the polar areas in comparison to the other latitudes, especially the lower latitudes. Number two, within the polar areas also, the Arctic amplification is there. So, it means Arctic is warming at a faster pace in comparison to the Antarctic. So, two points are there. One is polar amplification, second is Arctic amplification. And one of the reason, right, or one of the cause-effect relationship exists because of the ice albedo feedback. More warming in the polar areas leading to the more ice sheet gone leading to the more uh, albedo decrease and if the more albedo decreases more incoming sunlight will be absorbed leading to the more warming. So, the reduction in albedo increases the polar amplification, yes, albedo decreases, we have seen in class in detail these parts. Polar amplification is much stronger in the Arctic than in Antarctica, absolutely right, that is also, that's why it is also called the Arctic amplification. And the thunderstorm in the tropics contribute to the Arctic amplification, yes, it takes the heat from those lower latitudes and, right, uh, contributes in redistribution of this and part of that goes towards the higher latitudes so that the thunderstorms in the tropic contribute to the arctic amplification yes they also do contribute one big reason for the 
arctic amplification is decrease in albedo and decrease in albedo because of the polar ice cap melting because of the ice cover over here is decreasing so one is correct two is correct and three is also correct so all the three statements are correct answer would be d next is okay so these were the questions from this ecology and environment area do take care of yourself keep on focusing on your preparation have as many number of questions as you can right practice and it will help you in solving questions in the examination too thank you very much all the very best hello uh, good morning good morning to all of you myself uh, mohammed ayaz khan and we will be having a discussion on uh, the questions of science and technology uh, of the anubhav uh, you know test series for preliminary 2023 hmm? so let's start uh, with the questions so this is question number 35 the question number 35 is with reference to the dark sky reserve dark sky reserve which of the following statements uh, is are correct so see what is the meaning of dark sky reserve dark sky reserve is something where there is a minimum or no artificial light no or artificial light huh? hmm? no or minimum hmm? so obviously it is uh, you know hmm. that uh, it is a tract of land or region which has minimum artificial light interference so that is minimum or no so this statement uh, is right hmm? so that obviously we can observe the celestial objects in a better manner hmm? these places are designated under the purview of the united nations outer space treaty no there is a US based uh, organization which is non profit. Hmm. So, that organization gives this uh, dark sky reserve hmm. and it is called International Dark Sky Association. So, this is International Dark Sky Association. So, statement 2 is wrong. So, if statement 2 is wrong, then this cannot be the answer. This cannot be answer. And state when 1 is right, hmm, so this can only be the answer. Hmm. But still, we will see. Hmm. Uh, Hanley is the first place in India to be proposed as a dark sky reserve. Yes, Hanley uh, dark sky reserve, Ladakh will be India's first dark sky reserve. Hmm. So, this statement is correct. So, answer for this question is C. 1 and 3 okay fine sure so now move to the next question about this which of the following term best describes the organoid intelligence organoid intelligence this is in news basically this is bio computers bio computers so here what they have done they have developed miniaturized uh, you know organs like brain and all and with those miniaturized organs, brain and all, they have connected the sensors. And those uh, or small miniaturized organs are controlling those sensors. So, biocomputers are basically organoids plus sensors. And these organoids controlling these sensors. This is the concept. Huh? Now, you see the answer self assembled assembled machinery of three dimensional human brain cell cultures to memorize and compute inputs it is a distributed computing paradigm that brings computation data storage closer to the source of data so maine pehli cheez kya boli aapko brain huh? so this is there still say for example we don't know the answer but i never said distributed computing so this is out of the equation a virtualization based techniques that allow users to create configured customized application come on hmm. A method of manipulating media content come on so answer is a this is bio computer organoid organ bio computer their brain cells were, were cultured obviously for what for remembering or executing the operations question number 37 uh, which is about which of the following statements on solar panel consider the following statements on solar panels and uh, which of the following is are correct so, perviscite is the most common semiconductor material, you all know silicon. So, it is 
सिलिकॉन तो अगर सिलिकॉन वन गलत है तो ये भी नहीं है आंसर ये भी नहीं है आंसर सोलर पैनल्स लीड नीड लाइट एज वेल एज हीट ऑब्वियसली सर इट डज नॉट रिक्वायर हीट तो दिस इज ऑल्सो रॉन्ग इट डज नॉट रिक्वायर हीट सो वन सॉरी सो वन इज रॉन्ग देन देन दिस कैन नॉट बी द आंसर आंसर इज सी India stands fourth globally in installed solar power capacity. We are producing by the end of December 21. Sorry, 22. By the end of December 22, we were producing 61,000 megawatt of solar power. So answer is going to be three only for this particular question. A bit of a factual question. Now, active question number 38. Active galactic nuclei, active galactic nuclei. Basically, active galactic nuclei is uh, at the center of a galaxy. Center of galaxy with bright light. very bright light comes out that is called active galactic nuclei what happens that uh, there are super massive black holes a super ma massive black hole when they engulf uh, the stars hmm? so some of the material of that is star is converted into energy which is light that is called active galactic nuclei so basically it is extra non stellar source of energy it is non stellar non stellar means not coming from the source uh, not coming from the star that is called non stellar source of energy okay so our active supermassive black holes that emit bright jets hmm? so yes that are एक्टिव सुपर मैसिव ब्लैक होल्स सुपर मैसिव ब्लैक होल्स जब किसी स्टार को एनगल्फ करता है इट एनगल्फ द स्टार देन द सम मैटर ऑफ दैट स्टार गेट्स कन्वर्टेड इनटू एनर्जी एंड दिस ब्राइट जेट्स इज कॉल्ड एक्टिव गैलेक्टिक न्यूक्लियर अ क्वासार क्वासार इज एन एक्सट्रीमली एक्टिव एंड ल्यूमिनस टाइप ऑफ एक्टिव गैलेक्टिक न्यूक्लियर क्वासार व्हाट हैपेंस व्हेन टू ब्लैक होल्स मर्ज at the center of the galaxy then the light which is emitted is called quasar so this is right this is right narrow line sefert nls1 is a unique class of active galactic nuclei that is powered by black holes of low mass and hosted in spiral galaxies yes hmm. this is the latest galaxies which is emitting gamma rays hmm. this was nls is the latest galaxy which is emitting gamma ray and it is 31 billion light years away so it is 31 billion light years away so it is having low mass black holes at the center answer is d d so that is uh, question number 38 all three are correct here question number 39 consider the following statement which of the following above is are correct the time taken by mars to complete one rotation is double the time taken by earth so, no that's not correct mars take 24.6 hours to complete one rotation around the sun so it's almost the same the actual tilt of uh, so this is wrong hmm? it is almost the same as that of earth if that is wrong then answer can be a and c only hmm? then axial tilt of mars is almost similar to that of earth you all know earth had a, uh, earth has got an axial tilt of 23.5 degree mars has an axial tilt of 25 degree okay so statement 2 is right ab bas hame third ko dekhna this is, is a good combination mars has no global magnetic field so it ka koi apna magnetic field yes that's true it is not having any magnetic field as of now hmm? so answer for this question is c question number 39 answer is c 
question number 40 with respect to vertical takeoff and landing technology vertical takeoff and landing technology basically this is used in aircraft carriers aircraft carriers hmm. vehicles using this technology do not have a long runway to take off obviously the vehicle is uh, vertical takeoff and landing like this hmm. so runway is not going to be very long so this is true Hybrid technologies such as hydrogen cells and batteries can be used to propel aircraft using EVOTL, electric vehicle takeoff and landing hmm, technology. So here obviously if we see such technologies there is a, hmm, uh, like uh, hmm, here. Hmm, so we can use uh, electric vehicle takeoff and landing because uh, here if we see. Hmm, uh, this the aircraft carriers we have short takeoff vertical landing then we have a stow bar short takeoff but arrested recovery we have cato bar catapult takeoff but arrested recovery cato bar takes requires emuls electromagnetic aircraft launch system this is the most advanced one so similarly here we can have electrical electric vertical takeoff and landing so electric with which the electricity will be coming from hydrogen cells and the batteries for that purpose. So, question number 40 answer is C. Question number 41 hmm. genetic engineering appraisal committee GEAC. GEAC was created by environment protection act 1986 and it is the body responsible for regulating the GMOs in India. GMOs means genetically modified organism their trial and the commercial use is in the hands of genetic engineering appraisal committee. Now let us see the question. It is a statutory body under protection of plant varieties and farmers rights act answer is wrong. This statement is wrong the answer is environment protection act 1986. So let us see hmm. now. So you know the answer this cannot be the answer this cannot be the answer. The clearance for is mandatory for the environmental release of any genetically modified organism just hmm. As ex officio chairman, you all know hmm? uh, <coughs> the clearance is mandatory, like uh, you need to have the clearance. Any, any, hmm, you know, uh, release of uh, this uh, genetically modified organism requires obviously the clearance from none other than none other than come on, this uh, thing called genetic engineering appraisal committee. So, this statement is right. The Ministry of Environment and Forest Climate Change, the ex-officio chairman of GEAC, this statement is incorrect. So, they have their own, you know, chairperson, then answer is C. So, remember without the permission of GEAC, there cannot be any permission for the testing and any permission for any genetically modified crop to be cultivated in India. Remember this GEAC created under Environment Protection Act 1986. So, answer is C for this particular question. Ribosomes are non membrane bound. Consider the following statements Ribosomes are non membrane bound organelles found in both eukaryotic and prokaryotic cell. Yes, ribosomes are found in both uh, prokaryote and eukaryote. Hmm. So, they are found in bacteria cells which is prokaryotic, they are found in plants and animals which are eukaryotic. There is a membrane on the organelles, organelles means the parts of the cells. Ribosome do not have a membrane to cover, ribosomes are involved in protein synthesis, protein synthesis. So, statement 1 is right, all eukaryotic cells are identical that is wrong. Take plant cell and animal cell, plant cell has cell wall, animal cell has no cell wall. Like plant cell has plastids, obviously animal cells do not have plastids. Plant cells have uh, uh, vacuole, animal cells do not have vacuole. So, there is no cell wall, there is no plastid, there is no vacuole in the animal cell which of them all are there in the plant cell and plant cell and animal cell both are eukaryotic. Answer is A for this question, question number 88 answer is A. Okay, fine. So, 
let us move to the next one. With the reference to anthra anthrax, consider the following statements. It is an infectious disease caused by bacteria. Yes, it is caused by bacillus anthracis. Bacillus, yes. It can affect both humans as well as animals. Yes, it is a zoonotic disease. Zoonotic. Zoonotic means from animal coming to human beings. It is a zoonotic disease. Currently, there is no vaccine. There are vaccines. There are vaccines. There are two types of vaccines. One is a filtered vaccine. Filtered vaccine where we use the antigens. Hmm. So, there are two types of vaccines here. We use the antigen means the protein of the bacteria as a vaccine. And the second one is uh, we use live attenuated pathogen. Live attenuated pathogen means we are obviously we are uh, making the pathogen weak and then using it as a vaccine, live attenuated like oral polio vaccine. But uh, that polio is virus, this is bacterial. So, no confusion of uh, any sort should be there. Generic drugs. Consider the following statements, generic drugs. See, generic drugs are those which are made by the company other than the patent holder after the expiry of the patent. Like my patent is expired, now you can make the medicine. So, that medicine made by you after the expiry of my patent is called generic drugs. The condition for the generic drug is it should have the same salt means same chemical means should be there. Hmm? So, generic drugs contain identical chemical ingredients structurally uh, structurally identical to an originator product. Yes. So, if I am saying generic version of crocin, then it should have paracetamol. Now, paracetamol have to be exactly identical the one used by the others. Hmm? So, there is biosimilars are modeled after drugs that use living organisms. Yes, biosimilars are the generic version of monoclonal antibodies, monoclonal antibodies and to produce antibodies you need living organisms. This biosimilars also known as biopharma. This is also known as biopharma. So, that is also true. One of the objectives of the National Biopharma Mission is to develop biosimilars. Yes, World Bank and the Department of Biotechnology. World Bank and the Department of Biotechnology has, has announced this national biopharma mission to increase India's share in the, the in the global biopharmaceutical market. Okay. So, here all three statements are correct. All three are correct. Now, let us see the next question. Question number 91. With reference to the different particles generated in a radioactive decay, which one of the following statement is are correct? You know alpha particle, beta particle, gamma particle. Alpha is positive, it is heavy, beta is negative, it is comparatively lighter, gamma is simply energy. It has minimum penetration power, gamma has maximum penetration power. Okay. Alpha has got two positive charges, beta has one negative charge. Alpha particles have the least penetration capacity due to their huge mass. Yes. Its mass is zyada. Mass maximum. Mass zero. So, mass is more because of that their penetration capacity is less. This is true. Beta particles carry positive charge. Sorry, sir. The charge is negative. 
this statement is wrong. While alpha and beta particles have both energy and mass, gamma particles are pure energy. Gamma rays only energy. So, answer is B, 1 and 3. So, that is uh, question number 91. So, that is it for the questions of science and technology as a part of your Anubhav and I wish you have very good Anubhav and I wish from the bottom of my heart you again have good Anubhav on 28th of May hmm, uh, with the questions in the final exam. So, wish you best of luck hmm, as, uh, as I say we see you soon with the, while you preparing for your mains. Okay. So, best of luck. See you, uh, want to see your smiling face after preliminary exam. Thank you. Take care.